Since recently returning to college, I've found myself playing against beginner Smash players a lot more often. This has been a lot of fun, and it's given me some insight on how I used to play Smash way back when I thought Spinny Drill with Meta Knight was the best move in the game. It's also allowed me to see the kinds of mistakes I used to make back when I was a noob who had pretty much no idea what I was doing. Am I saying that beginners are idiots? Of course not, I used to be in their very same position. They're just, you know, kind of dumb. Okay, JK, JK. Actually, so what have I learned from playing against all these new players recently? Is there any particular advice I can give that you beginner players would benefit from? Well, there are several things, but with today's video I want to touch on one habit that makes so many low-level players a bit on the predictable side, and that's trying to punish where the opponent is instead of where they're going to be. So let's jump right into whatever the heck I'm talking about with an example. Say I'm shielding in the corner like this. Okay, sweet. Now, what do you expect most new players to do in this situation? Well, from my experience, they usually do one of two things. They either don't commit to anything because they're way too focused on their own character to acknowledge what I'm doing, or they try to punish me for shielding with a grab. This video will mainly be addressing the second type of player. Okay, banana boy, what's the big deal? Grab beats shield, right? Correct, grab does beat shield, just like how scissors beats rock, everyone knows this. But what beginners don't tend to consider is the fact that I'm able to do something to avoid that grab and I could very well be prepared to deal with that exact option. To avoid their obvious press of the Z button, I might short hop out of shield, since that's a pretty good option for Yoshi as I can get a landing up air combo if they whiff it. There are many other things I can do as well. So what should they do instead? Well, as I mentioned earlier and you might have guessed, the best thing that most people can do in this situation is try to punish what I'm going to do out of shield instead of what I'm already doing, i.e. the shield itself. I'm probably not going to be blocking forever, so it's important to keep track of and eventually start punishing what I do to get out. Let's say I jump, which is a pretty common option. The opponent can jump themselves and throw out a quick aerial. If I roll, there are a million ways to punish that. If I spot dodge, they can run up and jab, so on and so forth. The concept of punishing where the opponent's going to be applies to so many situations in Smash that it's almost impossible to list them all. If the opponent's above you trying to land, instead of hitting them straight out of the air if they get close to you, you can punish what they do before landing like air dodge since no one's just going to drift towards you and give you that hit for free. If the opponent's off stage, instead of trying to hit them where they are, you can attempt to beat out the option they're about to use to recover. Like if they jump, you can throw out a hitbox a little bit higher than them. Or if they attack, you can outspace it and whiff punish. If you're approaching the opponent, you can delay your attack a little bit to cover their attempt to stuff it out or avoid it. If you have a charged projectile, you can hop up and hit the opponent trying to jump over it, assuming that's what you think they'll go for. If the opponent extends their fist for a pound after the set ends, move your fist towards the area they're about to move their fist to, instead of where their fist is initially, so you don't end up hitting them too hard. Okay, I don't know what I'm even saying at this point. That was probably the stupidest line I've ever said in any of my videos, not gonna lie. Now, times will occur when you won't be able to punish what the opponent does after their option simply because it's impossible. To give a relatively specific example, if I'm Yoshi, the opponent's Ganondorf, and I nair out of shield on their shield while drifting away, they probably won't be able to punish me since that character's hot garbage in terms of speed. In this case, they can still at least settle for, what I'll call for the sake of this video, a pseudo punish. This means that punishing me directly will be impossible, but they can establish a little more stage control to have an easier time landing a real punish in the near future. Now, sometimes punishing the opponent for what they're doing instead of what they're going to do can be acceptable. If I do neutral get up from the edge and the opponent is super confident in punishing that option, there's no need for them to wait for what I do after it since that's just not necessary champ. They can simply punish the get up itself. If I whiff a super laggy smash attack, the opponent doesn't have to wait for what I do after it, as a free punish is really just right there. I mean, they can still wait if they have a really good read on what I'm gonna do and want to get into my head or something, but in most of these cases, I'd recommend just taking the guaranteed punish. The concept of punishing what the opponent does after their option mainly applies to situations where they have a lot of options at their disposal, and it's not extremely obvious how you're going to get a hit. Now, count how many times they say now in this video. Sometimes punishing the opponent for where they are is acceptable, as long as it's in the same place as where they're going to be after it. I know this sounds complicated, but hear me out, it's not that bad. Say they're shielding in the corner, and you've been repeatedly punishing their option to get out of that situation. They tried to roll and you punished it. They tried to jump and they got stuffed out. Look at you, applying the tips in this video, what a legend. Because you've been doing this, they might start holding shield in the corner for longer than normal because they're expecting you to try and cover their out of shield option. In this case, you can run up and grab. But doesn't this contradict everything I've said thus far? Not at all. See, punishing the opponent for shielding in this scenario is still punishing them for what they're going to do after their initial option. The only difference now is that they just so happen to be the same two options. All right, let me give another example that I think will demonstrate this whole concept better than anything I've said before. If you and the opponent are facing each other with your shields up like this, there's a million things the both of you can do. Let's say you predict that they're going to grab because again, you're focusing on what they do after their option instead of the option itself. In this case, you're gonna wanna spot dodge, jump over it, use a fast out of shield option, etc. But if you predict that they're just going to hold 
hold shield, you can grab them because instead of grabbing being their option of choice, they chose to shield for an extended period of time. The mistake a lot of beginners make, however, is always just punishing what the opponent is doing, which makes them pretty predictable. This is how I'm able to confidently assume that a lot of noobs will grab in this scenario, because it's super clear that's exactly what they want. Okay, hope I explained that well enough. But wait, how can I always know where my opponent's going to be? It's not like I have 5G in my brain that allows me to predict their every option. Good question. See, you're never going to be 100% perfect at reading people, but there definitely are some ways to get better at it. I'd say that the two main methods are experience and paying close attention to your specific opponent. Experience is the more important of the two. If you play against 100 different people who shield in the corner, especially if it's 100 people at varying skill levels, and even better if they play the same character as your opponent, you're going to get a solid idea on what option to expect from them according to how good they are. Most of you, I'm assuming, already have some practice doing this. Let's say you're playing against your cousin for the first time and he's using Kirby. Now what do you expect him to do when he's floating around in the air directly above four players in a big free-for-all? You guessed it, he's going to down freaking B. The reason most of you were able to guess that he'd do this is because of your previous experience. You've played against enough newbie Kirbys to understand that this is typically what they like to go for in these kinds of situations. As a result, you punish your cousin for what he does after floating in the air instead of punishing the act of floating in the air itself. Now what if I told you that this simple concept that you're already familiar with applies even at the highest levels of Smash? Obviously it gets a bit more complicated than just predicting a Kirby down B, but it really is the exact same principle. Here's a quick example. In this clip, Best Nest hits Samsora with a PK fire. In an attempt to get out of the fire, Samsora jumps out. However, because Best Nest is experienced enough to know that floaty players really like to jump out of the fire, he's able to instantly recognize Samsora doing this and punish with a neutral air, scoring him some extra damage. This even comes up a few more times during the match. See? It's the same thing. You've played your sister enough times to predict that your cousin at a similar skill level is probably going to Kirby down B when he's above you, so you bait the move out and punish it. Similarly, Best Nest has played against enough floaty players to know that Samsora will probably jump out of his PK fire, so he punishes appropriately. The second way for you to get information on where the opponent's going to be is by collecting data mid-match against them. If you notice that your opponent always spot dodges when you're running on their shield, you can recall that info the next time you're in that situation and punish. This goes hand in hand with experience. If you're super used to punishing opponents for spot dodging in these situations, you'll have an easier time recognizing it immediately and have a higher chance of actually landing the punish, since you'll be more prepared. If they jump in the corner, same thing. It's nice because you don't need years of experience to apply this tip. In fact, you can start doing it right now. Of course, experience does still help though. Now that you guys know about this concept, you can start applying it in all your matches moving forward. The next time your opponent is shielding in the corner, think to yourself, what are they going to do out of it? Then punish appropriately. Just remember to keep these two things in mind. Have confidence when you punish and don't commit too hard. Let's start with confidence. Whether you have confidence or not can make or break your ability to hit the opponent in a lot of situations. You're not going to get a punish on the opponent's jump off stage if you don't have the guts to even get off the level. So how do you gain this confidence? Well, besides the obvious, play a lot and you'll get more confident, which is definitely true, I'd also suggest getting out of your comfort zone. Try new things. If you think the opponent's gonna air dodge before they land, jump up there, wait it out, and hit them afterwards. Don't just do the same thing you've done the whole time you've played Smash, throwing out an up air and inevitably missing. Change it up a little. Over time, you'll start to find that making these decisions in an instant gets progressively easier. And come on, stepping outside of your comfort zone in Smash is not that hard compared to other things. You're not jumping into a cold shower, telling a random stranger they smell bad, or saying I like you to your crush. You're just pressing a few different buttons at different times in a video game. Sure, with tournaments it might be different, but there's no excuse not to try this stuff in friendlies. The second thing to remember when applying this video's principles is to not commit too hard. You don't need to charge a big forward smash if you think the opponent's going to roll in. You can simply stand where they're about to roll, react to them doing it, and punish with a safe tilt or aerial, which often leads to more damage anyway if that move is a combo starter. But wait, if you have confidence, doesn't it not matter if you commit too hard? You're probably going to hit them anyway, I mean, you're confident. Well, not exactly. See, confidence is important because it allows you to quickly get into position to punish what the opponent's gonna do. Without it, you'd be a lot less willing to cover their option and likely wouldn't get a hit because you were too scared to throw something out in time. However, just because you have confidence, it doesn't mean you need to be totally reckless with how you cover the opponent's option. Committing less reduces the risk of getting hit by something else in case the plan doesn't work out. A confident player knows that it is possible the opponent could choose something other than the option that they think they're gonna do, but the feeling they have that they will do it is stronger, so they get into position to punish anyway. They just don't commit extremely hard because they're only confident, not certain. Now if you have such a strong feeling that the opponent's gonna do a certain option, then fine, commit super hard to punishing them. Do the Mango H box. But in most situations, you're not going to have this hard a read on them and will want to be at least a little safer with how you cover their options. And that's about it. Hope you guys learned a thing or two from this video. Just remember that experience is the most important step to improvement in anything. This video is just here to guide you so you can know what to expect as you inevitably
inevitably improve by playing a lot. If anything I've said sounds complicated, I promise it'll make more sense as you get better. Still, feel free to comment down below any questions you might have and I'd be happy to clear some stuff up. Anyway, feel free to share this video with your friends if you found it helpful, and I'll see you all later.